What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space, and we're back in Medieval Engineers, and I've actually got something to show you this time. So, diving straight in, uh, it's taken quite a few iterations, sorry, excuse me bumping into my weight there, but what we have here is my take on a medieval floating arm trebuchet. So this is a specific type of trebuchet that's been developed much more recently. Uh, and I've been trying to recreate it in Medieval Engineers because it uses a lot of weights and wheels which I feel are a little bit more reliable than some of the rope stuff at the moment. So here are a few of my uh, prototypes as we go through and you can see I started off relatively small and it got built up. Uh, I will mention these things, I hate to say it, but having a couple of little workbench things it's really handy. <laughs> Either that or you end up like hanging stuff off the edge of the platform. But anyway, onto the real deal, and the real ones are these two over here. So we have two variants because with it being a trebuchet, it uses a sling to fire its um, load, whatever that might be. And the sling functionality isn't in the game yet. You can, if you wanted to, attach a rope to a ball, um, but you have no method of then letting go again. So the, the cannonball, the projectile, just remains attached to the end of the trebuchet. So what I'm going to do first up is I'll show you this one, which is the full working exactly like a floating arm trebuchet should. Uh, I've had to make a couple of adjustments because this, you'll see, it's got some quite wide wheel outriggers here. These should be much, much narrower in. Uh, but because of the size of these beams and some of the other considerations with the wheels, I've had to build kind of a weird one. It's kind of much bigger than it should be. But anyway, let me show you how this performs in action and then I can talk a little bit about how it works so everything's set up and ready for the shot so all I need to do is come down here and press T on this rope and if you press T here you can see the entire mechanism flings forward with all of its energy and that's the point of this particular design is that every last bit of energy on this counterweight down here is used to propel the arm forward. There's no bouncing, there's no end points. Even as it goes down there and swings back against itself, you can see that there's quite a big trench behind it as well. That allows it to fling the projectile forwards. So nice thing about this as well is it's stable enough to be completely reloadable too. So if I grab this and put it down here, you don't need two of these drums, but it makes the section next a little bit easier. So let's grab another one of these, and as you can see, it's got a catapult head on at the moment. Um, the tray down here is for the projectile if we ever get to the point where I can sort of set this up with a proper sling set up. But for the time being, and let's wind this in a little bit jumpily, oh, wrong way, wind this in a little bit jerkily. Uh, but as soon as I can, this will be set up with a sling setup because it's designed to work like that. The forces are not very catapult-like. They're quite gradual, quite smooth, which is perfect for a trebuchet, not great for a catapult. Catapult, you, it's quite an aggressive movement. So as you can see, as this comes down, it's pulling this arm up in these guidelines which has the big counterweight on the end of it and to begin with these wheels are rolling along these two coasters here but in a minute it's going to lever on these two wheels in the back instead and those ones are going to start lifting into the air so come down here and continue winding away unfortunately with the location of the winding wheel you can't really see all of this in action but as you can see now, those wheels have actually lifted completely off the ground and we're pretty much up in firing position. I might just be able to get a little bit higher. Basically, how high you can go is dictated by these two wheels here. Eventually, the game says no and it starts clipping through the wheels. Uh, as soon as that happens, you've gone too high. But this one looks like a, a nice high one. So now we're up in position and this is the bit that having these two makes easier. We have a central one in the middle there. If we can just find it, there it is which we can hook on over here. And now these are nice and easy to detach, one from either side, and they've also helped keep the entire thing nice and central in the mechanism as it went up, because you're pulling it from both sides at once rather than just from one location. And now it's up there and all ready for another shot, so uh, I might as well do so. Uh, I'll, I'll put a projectile in for this one. I warn you, because of the action on it, it doesn't have, because it follows through on its shots, which as I said, if there was a sling on the end there would really be helpful. It's not helpful at all when it comes to having an actual projectile in there. It will fire it, but it's not gonna fire it very far because the projectile stays in the cup too long and gets shot pretty much at the ground. But anyway, let's hit go one more time and see what happens, so. Oh, in fact, the projectile's already come out and landed on the wood. 
All right, it doesn't always do that. Uh, I've had some slightly odd behavior with those projectiles when they're on a, an incline. So this leads me to this one here, which is a variant designed to actually act as a catapult rather than as a floating arm trebuchet. So everything sort of kind of works in a similar way, except this only goes halfway down its action. So instead of having that smooth follow through, this has got a, a cross member that stops it from moving forwards any further. Hopefully at about the point where the projectile is sort of best released. Now, I haven't played with that point enough. Uh, it makes quite a big difference, the point at which you stop the arm, uh, and I haven't had enough of a go messing around with it yet to tell you whether or not I'm in the best position. Uh, but same deal here. This one actually goes up ever so slightly smoother. You wouldn't believe it looking at the arm, but let's have a look. We're about halfway up. And go a little bit further there we go all the way up and as you can see those wheels are just about holding on it's a little bit clipping but that, that's that's not too bad that's okay uh, although this might be a little bit too much of an angle now to get one of these in it let's have a look in fact it's joggling I need to reverse it off a bit to stop the joggling there we go and that's again it's those wheels and a slight clipping behavior uh, so let's get the small projectile, drop it in, and this one should do the job properly. Now I have forgotten to connect the middle up, and you do want to bother because otherwise when you release one side it kind of releases all wonky. So let's just quickly hook these up. But as you can see, this thing's completely reusable. It doesn't damage itself in the slightest, and that's probably something I'm the most pleased with it very surprising given how heavy these beams are if i just drop one on the rock over there it will break it so they are really heavy but let's hit t on this up it goes and this one will actually fire the projectile it doesn't go a huge distance as i said i need to play a bit up there to try and get this sort of working better and and this isn't a design designed to be a catapult you know that this is a design designed to operate like this with that sort of the follow through that really helps with a sling uh, and if you're interested, I'll include a couple of links down below to some information about uh, this style of catapult, uh, this style of tre catapult, this style of trebuchet, sorry, because they're, I don't know, they're kind of interesting and the physics behind them is really interesting. So that's that. And then finally, just to demonstrate in reality, if you're going to build anything, something like this is what you need at the moment. The difference it makes, I mean, the, this obviously is a setup for if you want to prove that you are a brute of a man I can actually manually turn all of these backwards believe it or not but anyway look at the difference that makes and how far that goes in comparison these things are very very powerful but have a habit of tearing themselves apart so there you go guys that's my um, floating arm trebuchet hopefully it will return with a sling on it and a few updates once we get things like uh, a smaller axle to go down here or maybe some different wheel sizes these wheels are really a bit big for the design uh, and maybe even just not quite so much of this strange bouncing around that it has a habit of doing. But still, I'm really pleased with how it functions. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit like, please hit subscribe. Uh, it really helps me and the channel out. And otherwise, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I will catch you next time.